Again, we have one of those Gospels that is all too familiar to us that we've heard maybe so many times, and it's the one miracle of which appears in all four of the Gospels. But as I've been praying with this Gospel passage, there's just been two words that have been rattling around in my mind, and that is responsibility and dependency. Two crucial components in the Christian life that I think our gospel speaks into today. So first, responsibility. The disciples have a problem on their hands. They've just been ministering to thousands and thousands of people. We know 5,000 men, not counting women and children, so they're exhausted. They've been at it all day. Jesus has been doing his thing. We know he's been healing all of those that are sick in the midst of those five, six, seven, eight thousand people. The disciples are helping out whichever way they are. And they make a couple observations to Jesus and say, it's getting late and we're in a deserted place. And there's women, there's children, they're probably hearing babies that are crying because they're hungry. So they look out to the crowds and they look to Jesus and they say, Lord, send them away to the nearby villages so they can buy some food to eat. And Jesus turns to them and this is where, in my mind at least, I imagine the disciples soiling their tunics maybe because of what he says. He turns to them and says, you give them something to eat. You do something about it. You do something to fix this problem. And the disciples here, you can see why they, maybe they disoiled themselves. And they very much are thinking, well, here's this responsibility that's immediately placed on their shoulders. When Jesus says, you do something. See, Jesus wanted them to feel the weight of the responsibility for the crowd because he knows that responsibility is good for them. Responsibility is good for us. Responsibility is part and parcel of the Christian life. Or we can say even more, responsibility is like it's part and parcel of the human person flourishing. Part of what makes little kids so cute, right, is they have no responsibility. So I'm looking at my nieces and nephews right now, they'll poop in their pants, they'll throw up on themselves, and we see that and we're like, hey, this is cute. They've got no responsibility. When you have a 17 or 18 year old without responsibility, it's not so cute. You got somebody who's probably getting into trouble who are lazy. When you have a 30 or 40 year old that doesn't have responsibility, something that's heavy, that presses upon their shoulders where they feel the weight of the responsibility, it's definitely not cute anymore because a 30 or 40 year old is meant to carry a load, to feel a burden, so as to press them forward, to exert themselves. So that's why a lot of my friends right now are having, having babies, siblings having babies. They talk about the experience of their, especially their first child bringing them home and they realize it hits them, oh, I'm responsible for that. That kicks you into gear. It kicks your butt into gear. Christians have a responsibility where it's only intensified carry your cross, love God above all, love your neighbor, feed the hungry, all the, cor all the corporal works of mercy, share the gospel. There's responsibility there. Right? And responsibility is a good thing. As I said, it's essential to, to getting our butts moving, to feeling the load, and it helps us from turning inward on ourselves and fo focusing too much on ourselves. So Jesus wants his disciples to feel the weight of the responsibility for the crowd. 
And so the disciples, what do we see? The disciples feel the weight and notice their knee-jerk reaction. It's to get out from underneath the weight of the responsibility. Send them away to the village. Like, let someone else deal with that. And I think we do this in little ways. And just recently, there's many just anecdotal examples of this. And one was recently a young man was going to, uh, meeting up with him. And, you know, he comes in right away. Sorry, Father, I'm late. I, I slept in. My alarm didn't go off. I don't know what's wrong with it. I turned to him and said, what do you use for your alarm? I use my iPhone. Okay. Well, I've never seen an iPhone malfunction to not have the alarm go off. Do you think there's a possibility that maybe you didn't set the alarm correctly? Or maybe you didn't set it at all? Yeah, you know what, Father, that's what happened. And this transitions, of course, to the spiritual life. I hear a lot from my people around my age and a little bit older of, like, I, I don't, like, Father, I, I don't know my faith that well, but it's, you, you gotta understand, like, I wasn't taught anything in religious education, growing up, like we were just told to sit down with crayons and color hearts. Well, that's the case for most people from the last of religious education for the last 30, 40, maybe even 50 years, like that's been the case. When was the last book that you read on the faith? When was the last time we opened up the catechism, listened to a podcast on the faith, or watched a YouTube video? Of course, we do this easily with sin, things that I struggle with, things that maybe that I've been struggling with for a while. Well, I just hope that one day that this will go away on its own. I'm not praying on it. I'm not confessing it regularly. Or I'm not putting things in place to avoid myself getting near to the spot of temptation to fall again. Where's my responsibility? We're called to be a saint, but it can't just be, Lord, make me a saint. That prayer is important to make, to be sure, but the, the re level of responsibility that's required as Christians. St. Augustine has this kind of powerful one-liner he said in one of his writings, God created us without us, but he cannot save us without us. There's a cooperation with God. There's a responsibility on our part to respond, even to the cross. We can't, we can't earn our salvation, what he did for us, but we have to respond to it. So it will serve us well, I think, of just asking ourselves on what aspects of my daily walk as a Christian am I not taking responsibility for? The second move here, with all this said about responsibility, I think the key to really unlocking this gospel passage is seeing it in the light of the utter dependency upon God. So the Lord says after, you know, after he says, don't send them away, give them some food yourself, the disciples say, Lord, all we have are five loaves and two fish. In other words, Lord, we don't have much to offer here. And Jesus simply says in this verse, bring them to me. Lord, you don't understand. We only have five loaves and two fish, and there's eight, nine, ten thousand people here. Bring them to me, the five loaves and two fish, the little that you have, and bring it to me. The Lord knew they, po they couldn't possibly feed that many people, but he wanted them to feel and know and to come to realize the utter dependency upon him that's needed for everything. The crowd, the disciples, you and I, there's nothing that we're not dependent upon God for. Which is something that we really, our world today does not want to hear. Our culture is all, Pope Benedict called it the culture of self-creation. And he wrote a lot about this and that is, around today, the thought is, I create myself. Like, I determine who I am. I determine what I am. Even for things that logically don't make sense, biologically. 
I can just determine what I am. This mindset is missing dependency, Benedict says. He says that dependence is the basic truth of the human person. That I'm a creature and I have limitations. It's a crucial key to the spiritual life. Even though we come to him with limitation, the Lord just says, give me the five loaves and two fish. Lord, but I'm in over my head right now with the kids. Like I'm sinking at work with things, stress, anxious. Give me your five loaves and two fish. But Lord, it's nothing. Like, like, I don't have much to offer here. Like I'm at my wit's end. Give me your five loaves and two fish. Hand it over, bring them to me and watch me work. Watch me multiply that and satisfy the importance of responsibility and dependency. So let's ask ourselves this week, those two questions maybe, or the first question of asking ourselves, what aspects of my daily walk as a Christian am I not taking responsibility for? And spend time with Jesus on that, ask, asking the Lord to reveal that to me. And then secondly, let's beg the Lord this week, Lord, help me realize my utter dependency on you for all things.